Hey everybody, in this video series, we're gonna create an RPG in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript from scratch. This game's gonna be in the style of a lot of the classic retro RPGs I loved when growing up, like Pokemon Red and old Final Fantasy, and it's gonna run entirely in the browser. Let's take a quick look at the result we're going for. So this game's gonna be called Pizza Legends. It's about these characters that are competing to become the best pizza chefs in the entire city by battling their lineups of pizza creations against each other. You control this hero pizza chef in the middle of the screen here and kind of guide him around. You can talk to people, there will be cutscenes, you can manage your pizzas in a pause menu and unlock new pizza types as you play through the adventure. There will be a whole turn-based battle feature where you can battle your pizzas against other rival chefs. Your pizzas gain experience points and grow stronger as they win battles. Uh, but yeah, Pizza Legends! Heads up that this is a really large project. This is going to span many videos. I'm not sure how many yet. Um, and we're going to get started at the beginning in just a second here. But a, just a reminder to, to make sure you catch all the videos. If you're interested in this, please be sure to subscribe. And that way you'll be notified when the new videos come out as soon as they're ready. Let's go ahead and take a look at the beginnings of our project here. What I have is a new directory on my machine called Pizza Legends. Um, it's, it's pretty empty, but there's a few things in here. So first, there's this index.html file, and that's really bare bones. It's just a HTML file with a doc type, HTML tag, an empty head, an empty and body. favicon in here. This is really just to make the browser not complain and to make the tab look a little nicer. And then finally, there's this uh, directory of pre-created images and assets that I've made for us uh, just as we build this game together. This is all available to you in the download link below in the description, so you can check that out and grab it if you want to follow along here. In here we have some sprite sheets and um, different assets that we'll be using throughout the game. So let's pop over to the HTML here and start filling out what we need. Uh, first we're going to start with our title tag, and the title of the page is going to be the name of the game, which is Pizza Legends. Uh, and then I'm going to add a style sheet. So I'm just going to paste in a link tag. And uh, for now, we're just going to call it like slash styles.css and give it the usual stuff it needs. So quick warning, this project's going to grow really big, really fast. And so right now I'm just, you know, having styles kind of in the root like this. We're going to eventually refactor it to kind of live in nice directories and that kind of thing. Um, but for now, we're going to start really simple. So now down in the body tag, I'm gonna add some just basic kind of divs that we're gonna be using. Uh, so first, the kind of home of the whole game is gonna be in this container called game-container. And so if I do dot game container and hit tab, the editor's gonna create a, you know, a div with the class on it. And then in here, we're gonna have a canvas tag. The canvas is what we're gonna draw most of our game to. And it's gonna have a class as well called game-canvas. And on our canvas tag, I'm gonna go ahead and supply the aspect ratio that we want our game to run in. So this game, we're gonna kind of emulate like a, a little screen, if you will, a uh, Game Boy screen. Uh, and the resolution we're gonna use is um, 352 pixels wide by 198 pixels tall. So this is a nice 16 by nine aspect ratio that's just gonna kind of work really well for the art style in this game. Um, you could go ahead and adjust this to whatever kind of art style you're working with. It's going to depend. We're doing pixel art here so we can get by with these really small numbers and then we're going to learn how we scale that upwards in a little bit. Um, if you're doing maybe more of like an illustrated style or, or something like that, you could probably have larger numbers here. This is just the size that we're going to use for the rest of this series. So moving on here, uh, I've created this styles.css file and I'm referencing it, but it doesn't actually exist in the directory yet. So let's go ahead and create it and click this little button and call it styles.css. Often just to make sure things are linked up properly, I just like to do a little like, you know, grab the body, background orange, something obnoxious just to make really clear that the style sheet's coming through. And so to actually run the project now to make sure, you know, things are working and all that, we need to start up a web server. And so my favorite way to do that, at least one of my favorite ways these days, is to um, open up a terminal, cd into the project directory. So here's our Pizza Legends. If I do ls, you can see it's got all the files that we've been working with here. Um, and I run this command called python-m simple http server, just like that. And when I fire this, it's going to start a local uh, a, a web server on localhost 8000. By default, there's a way to pass a different port in there if 8000 doesn't work for you. 
So now when I visit localhost 8000 on my local machine, you'll see our web page running here. I can open up the inspector just like this and see it's got all of the content ready to go. So now we're ready to actually work on the game. And I want to quickly add here, um, that Python command has nothing to do with anything really for this tutorial. We just need to run any web server in this directory. Um, if you're already an NPM user, there's a really great package called serve. You install that globally, and then it's just a matter of running and uh, I think just serve from the directory, and that will start a, um, a web server on a port, whichever one you define. That'll work fine too. It really doesn't matter. We just need to run this directory locally. So here we are back in our obnoxious orange land. Let's go ahead and start actually writing some styles that make this look a little bit more like what we're going for. So I'll pop open to styles.css. I'm gonna, uh, instead of this lovely orange color, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to kind of like a dark gray. Uh, I'm gonna add a reset to the box sizing model. I'm also gonna add some more just general reset stuff to the body here. So like padding zero, margin zero, just to kind of standardize things across browsers. And then we're gonna be using our arrow keys a lot to guide the character around. Uh, in browsers, that will naturally kind of trigger some scrolling, like thinking that we wanna scroll down the page. That's not really what we want here. So we're gonna go ahead and disable that by adding overflow hidden to the body itself. And now let's move on to our game container. This is gonna be kind of the home that houses the entire game, all the UI, everything inside it. We're gonna have a lot of positioning going on in here. So let's go ahead and start out with position relative to make sure everything is kind of relative to this container. Next, we wanna apply that same aspect ratio. So that's gonna be 352 pixels by um, 198 pixels. And uh, you may be thinking, hey, that's a little bit duplicated from the index HTML file. And it is, but the two things kind of have different purposes. Where this is, we're gonna really just kind of like set up the Game Boy screen, if you will, in the middle of the screen and learn how to scale it upwards in a second. Um, this is more for like visual kind of effects you can do with the canvas if you want to like play with the um, zooming inside the game or something like that, but without messing with the actual Game Boy screen, if you will. Uh, you can play with those two values independently. So that's why we have them separate here. We're not actually going to do that in this project, but I just wanted to call out that may be a reason to keep them separate. And now just so we can see the game container, let's go ahead and add an outline. So one pixel uh, solid white. So when I go back to the browser here and reload our changes, you can see that we've got a canvas tag here. Um, it's wrapped in this container and it's kind of, you know, it's showing us where it is, that's good. But let's move it into the center of the screen. So game container, uh, we're gonna say margin zero auto. And then um, just for now, let's go ahead and nudge it kind of away from the top of the screen so we can clearly see all four borders. And here's what we have now. So this is hilariously small right now, and that's okay. We're gonna fix that in a little bit. Um, but for now, we wanna move on and just start drawing some things to the screen to make this a little bit less boring. And so let's, let's get some JavaScript going now where we're gonna start actually um, loading images into the page and drawing their pixel data onto this canvas. So at the bottom of the body here, I'm just gonna add a script tag and I'll do like a comment scripts. Um, and this one, we're gonna do two. So first, we're gonna start with our overworld. I'll get into that in a second. And then we want another one uh, that's gonna be just like in a, a general kick off the game file. And we're gonna call that init.js. I wanna add real quick that again, just like the styles, I'm, I'm putting everything just in the root directory here. As we go, this project is gonna get real massive. There's gonna be way more JavaScript files than just the few that we have going on so far. And we're going to start moving them into directories that maybe make more sense for a large project. Uh, but for now, we're keeping it real simple. So let's go ahead and create these new files. So the first one's overworld.js. And then one more, it's going to be init.js. In init.js, real quick, I'm just going to um, kick us off with a function that um, executes itself. And then here we have console.log. Uh, it's working. And now when I go back to the browser and run this, we should see the message that just tells us the scripts are wired up and working. That's all good. Okay, so let's pop open to Overworld and see what this is gonna be all about. Um, most of this project we're gonna implement as JavaScript classes. So it's gonna look like class Overworld, and then we'll 
have things in here. I've chosen to do this project in classes because it kind of mirrors a lot of patterns you'll see in game engines like Game Maker, Godot, Unity. Um, there's this kind of game object pattern uh, that, that works really well for things extending off each other and kind of enclosing their own state within each other. If you hate JavaScript classes, that's okay. You don't have to build your game like this, but this is just kind of the pattern that we're gonna roll with for this project. So the overworld here is gonna be kind of our top level parent component. It's gonna keep track of a lot of state that's going on and then kind of uh, send that state downwards to little sub components. And we'll get there in a while. But first, what we wanna do is just have the overworld draw some image data onto that canvas tag that we created already. And so what I'm gonna do is make a constructor. And even though we're only gonna have one overworld, we're gonna code it as if we could have multiple, just in case uh, you know if something comes up in the future, we don't wanna be like totally against a wall. So I have the config here. What I'm gonna say is this dot element is gonna be equal to config dot element. So we're gonna pass in an element for the overworld to operate on. And then from this element, we wanna grab the canvas tag and we'll just go ahead and save it to this dot canvas. There's a few times the overworld is gonna want a reference to the canvas. And then finally, we're gonna be drawing to the context of this canvas a lot. Uh, and so we're gonna go ahead and save that as a reference inside the class too. So that's gonna be this dot canvas dot get context and then we'll pass in 2D. This is gonna give us access to a lot of the drawing methods that exist on canvas elements here. So now our overworld is created and that's good, but it doesn't actually do anything. Uh, another pattern you're gonna see all the time in this project is um, adding an init method to our classes. And so basically this code is gonna exist, but it's not gonna do anything until init is called. And so we're gonna go ahead and just say like, I don't know, hello from the overworld. And then let's just pass in this so we can kind of dig around in the console. So we're set up and ready to go here, but we're not actually creating a overworld yet. Um, so what we can do is do that in init.js. So instead of this log here, let's go ahead and say const overworld equals a new overworld instance. And in that, we're gonna pass in the stuff that the constructor expects. And so again, if you remember, uh, we basically are just pulling an element out of config, and that's gonna be the game container. And so we'll say element is gonna be uh, document.querySelector.gameContainer. And then remember from there, it, it grabs the game container, finds the canvas within it, the game canvas, and then that's what we're gonna use to draw on. Now that we've created the instance, let's go ahead and initialize it by saying overworld.init. And that'll call the method that we created right here. So when we uh, fire it up in the browser, We see our log appear, hello from overworld. And now um, this is being logged, which is the instance of overworld. And so you can kind of get in here and dig through to see all of the instance variables we have going on. And then um, furthermore, you can kind of dive in and look at the constructor and see all the methods we have. It's kind of cool. If you're just getting into class-based development, it's kind of a nice way of just digging through and seeing everything that's around. Okay, so back to the code. Uh, what we want to do now is in our overworld, instead of just logging a message when we init, we want to start drawing stuff to the screen. So what we're going to do is um, take an asset that I have in that assets directory. Let me find it for you. There's this file called demo lower, and this is what we want to draw to the screen. This is going to act as the environment for like a test room that we're going to build a lot of the game features into. So I'm back in the code here. How Canvas works in HTML is if you want to draw pixel data from an image onto a canvas context, you need to first load that image into the browser in memory. And so uh, to do that, we can say image is gonna be a new image. And this isn't gonna get injected to the DOM or anything like that. We're just gonna like create it under the hood sort of. And then um, once the browser creates it and downloads our asset in, then it can copy those pixels over to our canvas context. So to make that happen, let's go ahead and add an onload callback to our image. And so basically um, we're using an arrow function here because whenever this fires, we wanna take our this.ctx and um, we're gonna draw an image on it. We'll do that in a second. But this will never fire right now because the image doesn't have a source. It's starting empty. Um, 
it's set up to do something when it's done loading, but we haven't actually given it a source yet. And so to do that, we're gonna say image.src equals, and this is gonna be the path to our image that we wanna load in. So the path to that asset is uh, images, maps, demo lower.png. So as soon as this is set, the image is gonna to start to download this asset, and then once it's downloaded, it's gonna fire this callback. So from there, we wanna take our context and run the draw image method on it. Draw image wants a few different arguments, and in this case, we can do among like the simplest version of it. We'll get more complex in a second, but we're gonna pass in the image that we wanna draw the pixels from. Uh, so that's just gonna be image, which is the image we created and downloaded here. And then we need uh, an x, y coordinate of where we want to draw starting from like the top left corner of the image we just downloaded. Uh, so that is just gonna be zero, zero. And now when I fire up the browser, you can see that our image for our map is appearing on the canvas. So just a quick recap of what's happening here. Basically, uh, when we init, we're gonna create a new image, we're gonna assign a source to that image, and then whenever that source is downloaded, we're gonna um, copy all the pixels over to our actual canvas, uh, where the canvas has a context, and the context is the thing that allows us to draw to the canvas. But as you can see, this is tiny, uh, super tiny. We wanna scale it up so that we can actually see the game. So these days we can achieve this with just CSS without needing to mess with any like math or anything like that. Uh, so I'll come back to our code and go into styles.css. We're gonna take the entire game container, which is that white outlined area and scale it up. And so we'll say transform uh, scale. We're gonna start with three. And so what that's gonna do is take every pixel that's on the screen there and basically multiply it by three. Uh, which again, we're, we're doing pixel art here, so that works really well. That might not work so well for like a um, illustrated game or something like that. But pixel art, perfectly even squares of color, uh, scale is perfect for this. So when I apply this and pull it up in the browser, it's working, but, but there's like two problems with it. One, it looks blurry, and we'll fix that in a second. Uh, but two, you can see that it's cut off here. And that's because scale by default will start scaling from the middle of the thing that you're scaling. And so if, if this is what we're scaling, basically we have uh, expanded it to go like this way, but the top of the monitor is still right here. And so now the top of the game is basically cut off. And so we need to push it down this way now to compensate for that scaling. So we'll go back to our CSS and right after we scale, we're gonna go ahead and uh, translate Y just by 50% and translate, uh, percentages and translate operate on the size of the actual thing. So it's gonna take the game container and then move it down 50% of the height of the game container. So now when we see that, we can see that we can actually see the game again. And this will allow us to sort of uh, remove that temporary margin that we added before. So I'll go ahead and rip that out. Now let's take care of that blurriness. So just to see it one more time, uh, if I zoom in here, you can see that there's some fuzziness around the edges. Uh, pixel art should look like perfectly crisp, so that's no good. Again, there's a real easy way to fix that in CSS these days, where if we take our game container and grab any canvas inside of it, uh, spoiler, we're, we're gonna have multiple canvases going on in a few videos from now, uh, but we wanna apply this effect to any canvas we have. So we'll take all the canvases and run a rule on them called uh, image rendering pixelated. And what this is gonna do is tell the browser to just like evenly multiply all the pixels. Don't worry about like blur compensation or anything like that. And when we see it in effect, see the um, lines on the art just instantly crisp up and we have perfectly even squares of color. And because this is all CSS, this kind of like opens the door for some responsive styling we can do. Uh, so say you have like a really large monitor and you want to scale this thing large, like you could scale it by like four or five, whatever you can fit in the screen. Uh, see how giant that is? That's a little big for the screen I'm using right now. Um, but the idea is that you could continue to scale it however you want, or even smaller if, if you want to support mobile with your game. Um, I guess we wouldn't need scale in that case, but how about like two? Um, and, and really just by playing with the CSS value, you can size the viewport to be whatever you need. Okay, setting this back to three real quick. Um, this is looking okay so far. You know, it's a little bit more interesting. We see like a little bit of a map. 
Uh, but these games are all about the characters, so let's get a character on screen next. So hopping back to the code, and what we're gonna do is find our drawing code again. And right after we draw this image, we're gonna draw another image right on top of it. So the way that canvas drawing works is, is very much just like drawing on a regular piece of paper, where if you draw a shape or something like that, and then you draw another thing right on top of it, it's going to cover up what you drew before. And so if we want something in the background, like this image that we have going on right now, that will be drawn first, and then anything on top of that will be drawn next. And that's how we get some layering effects that we'll end up doing here. Uh, so let's go ahead and draw a person to the screen. So we're going to use the same pattern that we used before for the image, uh, but we're going to call this one hero. Hero is going to be like our, our main hero character. We'll say that the hero is also a new image and that uh, you know when hero loads, just like before, we're going to um, draw the hero to the screen. And then again, to kick off the loading process, we need to assign a source. And so the hero is going to live in uh, the directory images slash characters slash people slash here that's a little redundant but there's different types of characters in this game about pizzas and now let's just try the same thing that we did before so this dot ctx we're going to draw all the pixels of that hero image uh, so we'll pass in hero and then just zero zero like before let's see what this looks like And aha, we can see that it's working, and that's good. Uh, but the hero asset here isn't just one image, it's a sprite sheet. So within this one image, we have like all the different variations of frames that the hero or a person could be showing. And so what we need to do is modify our code to not just draw the entire thing at a position, but actually to only draw one crop of, of the hero right now. So let's go back to the code and adjust our draw image method here. Um, we are currently using among the most basic flavor of this method, which you only pass three arguments into. Uh, but for us to achieve the effect we need to achieve, we need to like really beef this up. And in fact, we're going to end up passing nine arguments here. Uh, and so the first one's going to be the same, just hero as it was before. That's the image that we're drawing pixels from. I'm going to break out the spacing to make this a little bit easier to read. The next two are going to be the starting points of the left and top crop. So if we have a, a sprite sheet, we need to kind of tell the code, like, where should you start cropping this image from, since we only want a subset of the whole image. And we're just going to start with like the top left frame, the most basic one. And so for us, that'll just stay zero. But I'll leave a comment here to sort of explain what we're doing. And so this is going to be like the left cut. Uh, and then the top cut is next. So the next two arguments are going to be the size of the cut that we want to make. And so to better visualize this, I'm going to open up the asset that we're working with in a, um, you know, my favorite pixel art editor. It's called Asprite. Uh, and, and you can see the whole image kind of laid on top of this grid. And you'll see that the, the character is designed in these squares of 32 by 32 pixels. So here's a frame, you know, here's a frame. Here's a frame, you get the idea. What we want to do is tell the canvas that you know we're going to start cropping at 0, 0, just like we said, but we need to stop at 32 wide and then 32 high. And so here we'll pass in 32, 32, and that's going to be the uh, width of cut and the height of cut. So moving on, the next two arguments are going to be the actual position that we want to draw the character on the map. And so we've, you know, so far we've cut out what we want to draw, but now we need to place what we want to draw. And so what I'm going to do is instead of, I was going to say, let's just do zero, zero, but instead I'm going to go ahead and utilize a variable here. So X, Y, you can imagine that we have a hero and maybe the uh, hero has an X, Y that can change as the, you know, character moves around the map. So we'll say X is, we'll start zero and Y is going to be zero two. And so we'll just plop them there at, you know, X, Y, zero, nice and simple for now. And finally, we need to provide the size of which the character should be drawn on the map. So if you wanted to take the character and like scale it up or scale it down a certain way, you could do that here, but we're just gonna keep it really simple and draw it at the natural size that we cut. And so for us, that's another 32 by 32 cut. So here's what it looks like. You see that we only have one frame of our character. His position's a little funky right now, and we'll get to that in a second. But just for fun, real quick, let's see how playing with the, these last two arguments can kind of 
um, mess with the display of the hero. So he looks nice and crisp right now, but if I come back and maybe change this one to like 48 picks, you'll now see that the crop is still correct, but then the canvas is drawing it in like a skewed aspect ratio. And so anyway, that can be kind of fun to mess with, but I'll go ahead and set it back to what we want, which is 32, 32. So let's go ahead and talk positioning for a second. Right now you can see that the character is up here in the top left of the screen. Let's go to our image editor and say, I've got the map open right here. Say we want him to maybe be standing like over here somewhere, or let's just keep it simple. And how about right here? To do that, we just need to start counting 16 by 16 cells uh, from the top left corner. And so all of these maps are gonna be designed 16 by 16. The character is 32 by 32 so that he can appear like bigger than the, the cell tiles. We'll go into that in a little bit, but the maps are always 16 by 16. So I'll start counting from the top here. Uh, for the X coordinate, it's gonna be zero, one, because we start with zero. And then for the Y coordinate, we want zero, one, two, three, four. And so if I go back to our code and just say that the character's X is one and um, you know his, his Y is four, like we said, those values will be used here, but we need to go ahead and compensate for that grid. And so let's say times 16 here. So let's see what this looks like. We can see here that the character's position has moved and it looks almost like what we'd expect, but something still seems funky about it. And that's because the character, again, is designed in a 32 by 32 pixel uh, sprite sheet. And so the top left corner is actually gonna be kind of like right here. Uh, and I can kind of visualize that better by just going into the hero right here. And at the top left, I'm just gonna go ahead and add like a marker um, let's pick this color right here. So this will mark the top left corner of where the asset's being drawn. And if I reload, you can see that that's right here. It's perfectly aligned with what we expected, but the character visually is still kind of not in this cell. And so what we need to do is add some nudging to sort of compensate for the character's art size. So if I just zoom in here a little bit, kind of a good way to do this is just to pull up a little measuring tool and say that we want his feet kind of like right here. And so we're gonna take his foot and maybe go this way by like eight pixels or so. And then maybe up by like 18 pixels or so. So let's pop over the code and try that out. In our X where we're applying the grid, we can go ahead and just subtract eight and then subtract, um, what do we say, 18 here and pull this up in the browser, reload, and you see that the character is right smack dab in the cell, kind of where we expected him to be. Now, just for cleanliness, I'm gonna go ahead and go back into a sprite here and remove our little indicator, because we don't need it anymore. Just to make the frame a little bit more interesting, we're also gonna adjust his position. And so instead of being at one, four, let's make him like in the middle of the room, which is like five, six, and you can see that. And again, these variables are what we're gonna play with to actually move the characters around. So they're hard-coded right now. In future videos, we're gonna make them dynamic. And so one last thing we're gonna add here just to make our scene a little bit more complete. Um, you see how this character is just laying flat on top of this image. It looks a little flat right now, and so we wanna add some perspective. Just like the objects here have little shadows underneath them, we wanna add a little shadow at the character's feet. So I'll go back to the code. And we're gonna do the exact same pattern that we've done so far. And so we're gonna make another image. Called shadow. We're gonna give shadow an on load. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. And then we'll go ahead and add shadow source, which is images characters shadow.png. We want the shadow in the exact same position that the hero's in. So I can actually take all of this code for draw image, put it on here and just change it to be shadow. And when I reload the scene, you can see that the shadow now appears at the hero's feet. The shadow image is cut to be the same size as one hero frame, so it just kind of perfectly aligns. Now I bet a lot of Spidey senses are going off right now being like, hey, this code has a lot of duplication in it. It's not really, you know, scalable. Uh, what if we had two characters? Then do we need another shadow and another, you know, hero sprite? What if we want a different map that's not always this map? 
Those are the exact topics that we're going to cover in the next video. For now, we have the basics of drawing something to the screen, scaling it up, and putting things in positions according to their state. In the next video, we're going to tackle refactoring some of this code into a concept called a game object, where we can have multiple types of different objects being drawn to the canvas right here, each with their own nice little file and their own nice little piece of state and behavior. That's going to allow us to add interactivity to the game, where the different game objects can talk to each other and be guided around by the human player. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're getting value out of it, I really appreciate it when you hit the like button and subscribe. That helps me continue to make these. And if you're following along with this code tutorial or you're already working on a game, you should join our Discord. We have this community of people that are making and playing indie games. So whatever you're working on, hop in there, tell us about it. We'd love to see you there. Thanks so much, everybody. Catch you in the next episode.